from one of arguably the most successful and most popular shows on TV, one of the most awarded shows of all time, uh, Game of Thrones, everybody. So let's begin with our favorite mercenary, Braun. Let's hear it for Jerome Flynn, everybody. Hello, everyone. What's up, Jerome? Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. It's the most surreal thing I've ever done, but it's, it feels fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, especially when we get everybody out here. So let's keep the list going. Grandmaster Kyburn, let's hear it for Anton Lesser. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Or not there see you. Is. Virtually see you. Virtually see you. Yeah, it's, we're all, we're all yeah. seeing each other, kind of, and they're all watching. So thanks for being here. All right, next up, uh, he is the treacherous Ollie. <laughs> who, who knew uh, that little boy could be such a bad one in the end? Uh, no spoilers, but actually spoilers. Let's give it up for Brennick O'Connor. Hello. Hello, Hello, Brennick. Brennick, thank me. you for being here. Um, oh, man, our, our lovable giant Hodor. Let's hear it for Christian Nairn. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Kristen, thanks for being here. Excited to have you all. Um, but we are only halfway through. We've got four more amazing uh, folks to bring out. So let's keep it going. Uh, he played Razdel Moiras. Let's hear it for George Giorgio. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, George. Thanks for being here. Uh, hey. Next up, if you, if you thought we hated Ali when, when Ali made uh, some decisions, uh, we despised uh, this next character, uh, not because of uh, this actor's portrayal, well, because of this actor's portrayal, not the actor himself. Um, let's give it up for the evil Ramsey Bolton. Let's hear it for Ewan Rayan. Hello. Rayan. How you doing, Ewan? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Next Thanks up. for having me. He made it. He made it almost to the very end, everybody. He made it almost to the very end of the Night's Watch, um, and then uh, died tragically, um, but saving uh, the saving that wall. Please give it up for Gren. It's Mark Stanley. Hey everyone, how you doing? All right. Hey Mark, thanks for being here. And last, uh, but certainly not least, um, Game of Thrones was uh, built off of powerful female characters, um, and this next young lady is no exception, uh, playing the part of Alice Karstark. Let's hear it for Megan Parkinson. Hi. Hey, Megan. Thanks so much for being here. Oh my gosh. What, Thank Jerome, you for you're, having me. Jerome, you're right. This is a, a quite the surreal uh, experience. Um, there are folks Again, watching from around the world, nothing but hearts and applauses and the strong arm <laughs> emoji uh, in the chat right now. Uh, we're going to be following along with the fan questions um, and relaying them to you. And we just want to hear a little bit uh, from all of you. The time's going to go so fast, but I'm so excited. Uh, and I know I speak on behalf of all the fans when we say just thank you uh, for taking some time out of your day to give us a brief break and then some a respite from, uh, from whatever you know, we're all doing right now. So, so thank you so much. Uh, first off, I want to get started. Uh, congratulations to you all. Uh, one of the most awarded, most successful, most popular uh, fantasy series, but really just television shows of all time, uh, Game of Thrones. Eight seasons, over 70 episodes. Uh, what, a, what an amazing world that was created by George R. R. Martin and then brought to life uh, by that team at HBO. I would just love to hear a little bit about what just the fantasy world that was created in terms of the costumes and the sets uh, and that world, that beautiful world that was created was uh, an amazing part of the show. And I'd just love to hear from each of you to kind of kick things off what your first experience was walking on that set uh, for your first day of filming, uh, you know, going, going to the costume trailer, getting all costume and makeup up and then walking on to whatever we had. You guys were all in different parts of the world at different times. Um, but I'd love to hear those first experiences of being on the set of Game of Thrones. Whoever wants to kick it off. Well, for me, it was my first job, so uh, it was quite, uh, it was huge, it was a huge thing to walk onto. Um, there were quite a few of us, really, that I don't think had worked on camera before. I think Kit had come from theatre background, John Bradley the same. Uh, a lot of us were stepping in front of the camera for the first time, and our first few two weeks were in Castle Black, uh, and they were the first experiences that we'd had, so you're walking on to quite a busy, bustling crew that are panicking themselves because they want to get it right. Uh, <laughs> and you want to get it right as well. And no one actually has any time to worry about whether or not you're, you're, on, you're in control of your stuff or not. And so for me, it was, um, I was, it was amazing. I don't think I've walked onto anything that was of that grandeur since, actually. Yep. Well, I've got to say, I was bloody terrified. Um, <laughs> 
I think there was about 300 extras in my first scene. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. it was the most terrifying filming experience I ever had, but also the most thrilling. Um, yeah, I mean, there was nothing, nothing really that compares to it, really, in terms of epicness. <laughs> so, yeah, it was great. And George, where was your, where was that first scene? Yeah, where was that, oh, that whole landing shot? Um, oh. oh, sorry, Megan. Was in, um, it was in the desert in Morocco in a place called Wazazat. Very cool. Amazing. What was sorry, that? Wazazat in Morocco. Oh, right. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, Megan, let us know. You were, you were uh, in a different terrain altogether. <laughs> yeah, I was in, I was in uh, Belfast and obviously I came season seven. So obviously it was like coming into a secondary school and everybody knew each other and you were just kind of the new kid. Um, <laughs> and I walked into the great hall at Winterfell and, you know, this, this kit and there's Sophie and there's, you know, Tim McKinnery and I'm just shaking. And, and, uh, I remember, uh, Tom and just, you know, gave me this massive hug and I didn't know him. Um, and he was just like, we've got another redhead on set. And I was just like, <laughs> turned to Kit and was like, just don't tell him it's not real. I'm a brunette. It's died. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was terrifying to just kind of be met with this whole family and just be like newbie. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It was the same. It was the same for me being terrified and I'm old. I should know better now, <laughs> but it doesn't get any easier. Um, I mean, for most actors, they'll tell you, it, it doesn't get any easier because all you want to do on your first day is impress upon whoever you're working with that it wasn't a mistake that you were cast. <laughs> so um, I was in Belfast. <laughs> I, I didn't join till season six. So again, um, as Megan said, you, you, you're just a new kid. And I was in some dingy, it was very unimpressive, just a dingy sort of <laughs> cell that was built in, in, in a in um, the big sort of uh, studio. Right. It was dark. I didn't know what I was there to do. I didn't know <laughs> the scene particularly. And I ended up bandaging Jamie's hand, not knowing, because you never got my, any of the script. Well, I didn't anyway. Did, did, it, did you get all the scripts, everybody else? I didn't. No. I just got, <laughs> got my little bit. Never. So I, just, I just had to respond to this guy who I realised eventually was one of the main actors, uh, yeah. Jamie Lannister. Um, um, just, hi, I'm, and oh, hi, I'm, I didn't know what I was doing, so I just went along with it and then went home. And that was my first day. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was 13 when I joined, so I really should have been scared, but because I was just sort of so naive to the whole, like, grandeur of Game of Thrones and the idea of what it was, I just sort of just just toddled on and just took it, took it in my stride kind of. But my first, my first scene was a battle scene in Iceland in this like field filled with waterfalls and stuff. And it was just the most surreal experience. Just a 13 year old kid in the middle of this battle and just being told, and you're, you're not at school for some reason as well. And it's just, it's just a brilliant experience. Yeah. Completely surreal. My yeah. first um, scene was also in um, the Grand Hall in, in Winterfell, the same as um, Megan's. And yes. I always had imagined that, um, like the magic of TV and movies, everything would be quite false and like it'd be like sort of big cardboard backdrops and stuff. But it was all really real. Um, like it was, it felt like real stone. It smelled like real, like medieval times, like dead animals and sweaty actors and. <laughs> You know, it's, and that was probably mainly me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was definitely the realism that really got to me. Um, and it made it quite easy to get into character and sort of be in that world because um, it did not really feel like a set to me. Yeah. They, they spared no expense. The dead animal spell, they brought that in just to make it authentic for you all. Yeah, we're very lucky. We're very lucky. <laughs> I always thought it was Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I hadn't. I was definitely nervous too. I hadn't worked for on screen for ten years. I hardly wow. worked, worked at all for ten years. I thought I was kind of uh, managing to escape from the business uh, out here in Wales. Um, so I and also I, I was nervous because I didn't actually know what I was walking into, and I was worried about uh, kind of you know medieval history drama um, being done, quite frankly, by Americans. No, take no offense, but no. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this could go all completely wrong. And uh, 
but it, I very soon realized that there was kind of class all around me. And, and what helped to allay the nerves was, I think my first scene was, um, was an, the ambush scene. And I had, to, I had to slaughter about six people in two minutes, um, which helped me just forget about everything, to be honest. And, uh, but it became clear very quickly the, the quality of what was, what was around me. And I, and I didn't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did okay, us Americans. We did, we did it okay. <laughs> you said you did. You said. <laughs> Very nice. Ewan, I think, I think you're up, uh, up last here. Your first experience on set? Um, <clears throat> I, think I, I think we were in a, in a forest somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Northern Ireland. It was a scene where, where, uh, where uh, Theon almost gets... Uh, uh, raped and um and then they all get shot by the arrows and it was kind of and i got to say winter is coming in my first scene which was quite cool Uh, and i got to do a bit of a sarah connor come with me if you want to live kind of vibe (laughs) no no, terminate whatever you've seen the film um and uh yeah it was pretty yeah it was it was kind of exciting it was just such a big thing going on it felt like i was an outsider i think like a lot of other people because there was a crew and everyone knew each other and you know but they very quickly made me feel very welcome. Um, and it was great. Yeah, it's it's so cool, or, or not cool, but interesting to hear how you all had a very similar first experience of just uh, overwhelming intimidation, you know, about uh, wanting to shine. And I think uh, the reason why you're all here, the reason why the show was so popular and we love your characters was the amazing work you did. So so thank you so much. And uh, to uh, Anton's point there of, you know, they made it so easy for you, like a shout out and a credit to all the show creators and all the designers and everything that really, yeah. you know, made it feel like we were in this world uh, for you on set, but then, you know, together with you as fans, you know, watching from home. So really cool stuff. Was there, um, let's get to some fan questions. Uh, and this kind of goes along a little bit uh, with what Jerome mentioned about fantasy series, right? And having different people creating them. And uh, Jennifer Hill, Robin Nault, who's watching on Facebook, uh, says there were a lot of fantasy, fantasy series prior to Game of Thrones and since. What do you think? And, and from now on, you know, there's a bunch of us like, well, we'll kind of bounce around whoever wants to answer each one. You don't have to get uh, everyone on each one. But I'd love to hear anyone who has thoughts on why Game of Thrones particularly has stood out uh, and stood that, you know, will, I think, continue to stand the test of time and really changed and set the bar for fantasy series. Was there was there anything that particularly stood out to you while filming scenes or or, uh, you know, uh, character arcs and things like that that made it feel different than the, the traditional the, fantasy series. Yeah, the, the quality ahead. of the script, man, is just you get these incredible scenes. Um, and I just remember just re- get reading them and going, "Wow, I get to do this scene!" You know, it's just amazing. And it was just like every. I felt for me, for me personally, every season there was one absolutely amazing st- scene that I got to do, and uh, there were lots of brilliant scenes, but particularly that one would always stand out, and just these great long scenes you can really get into and um yeah it's just brilliantly written by really really clever people and um and then executed to perfection you know amazing you 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 have to start also with the the characters that george that george created yes so many wonderful characters combined then with the casting and the and the way dan and dave took that and managed to keep, because I believe, you know, it's hard for George to keep the standard of the, the reviews for the books. That was so, they started going down, but Dan and Dave kept that going. And they yeah. was, I've never, I've never um, experienced such care taken about the writing on set. I totally trusted uh, what I was going to be given in a way that I've, I've not been able to. But also I, I think the fact that George was tapping into our own ancestral history um, I think that's a really important part of it is that there's something about life back in those times, the wildness of it that appeals to us now where we're much more cosseted and uh, less in touch with our wildness. So I think it's a whole combination and the magic of it. There's a whole combination of stuff that made it what it was. I think also well, I think- there weren't so many rules and I think that made it something different and it made everyone sit up and go, yeah, you know, they're, they're being brave, you know, and they, they they kept doing that throughout the whole, you know, throughout the whole show. So I think that really made it special. Yeah, I think bu- building on that, the the political side of the storyline also elevated it above other like fantasy shows that I'd enjoyed. 
they were, they, were, they weren't just sitting in the in the idea that there are dragons and magic exists they they were making it a real grounded drama within that that's what really appealed to me yeah that would that's what it was for me as well i thought that the scope and depth of his mythology that had come out of george rr R. martin's um mind was just incredible absolutely incredible i remember sitting down we had breakfast with him once in um one of the hotels in belfast and he you know he'd sit down and he'd say i, I start i i was interested in how he'd come up with it how, how he'd always keep going with it because he's he's written however many hundreds of thousands of words yeah um and it was amazing that he he said he'd sit down with his cup of coffee and good days were when he realized that the moon had replaced the sun and his cup of coffee had gone clock cold uh and i guess it's that kind of dedication that we were all we were all allowed uh, a view into really Yeah, I think you're right about um, you're all about the characters, but then about the complexity of the characters, right? You know, the traditional fantasy series are are often sometimes a little more black and white. There's good characters and there's evil characters. Uh, but what's amazing about all your characters is that they continue to be gray. You know, even even the the worst, even the Ramsey Boltons, you had moments of like kind of rooting for him. You know what I mean? Or like or no, broad, like I, no, yeah, I think, no, not, I, like. Like just Even being I like, I wasn't rooting for him, man. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted him. You didn't want him to die. Like you didn't want him to go yes, away. Yes, I guess is what did. I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like this guy is creating all kinds of problems. Like he's got to stay. You know. <laughs> that device that um, you talked about uh, of um, taking uh, taking the character that's taking you through the story potentially. And, and you getting identified with it, taking that away at a moment's notice and mm. you being left as an audience not knowing what's going to happen and, and where, you, where you can have your reference point. It may, I think it makes you pay attention to something like that in a very unique way that maybe nobody had done before. Certainly I felt, you know, you, you're always sort of not knowing, well, where do I stand? Who do I, who do I root for? Who do I, who's the villain in this and who's the... Who's the hero? So, because you never knew, it was so continuously engaging. So, it was a different type of storytelling, I guess. Mm. Yeah, and I think George, you said uh, it was brave. I think that's a great way, way, way to describe it. You know, uh, very brave, bold choices. And yeah, you had no idea what where characters stood or what their ending would be or what would happen um, with them. And obviously, <laughs> the series became very iconic for its uh, amount of character deaths. I mean, so many great characters, uh, but then you know, you knew no character was safe. Some of the most uh, beautiful deaths, uh, obviously Hoder's uh, death is one of the most beautiful, I think, scenes uh, ever portrayed. You know, um, everyone, no, we've all seen the series, all the fans out there. So spoiler alert, I think only one of one of us here made it, right? I, if, if we go, if we look at the, uh, the panel, <laughs> Brady Bunch style, um, made it all the way to the end. Um, but, you know, some people- hey, hey, whoa, 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 in my head, I made it, Right to the Iron Throne. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I was here at the end in spite of having my head smashed against the wall in a far too brief conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> You were certainly one of the closest. You were one of the proximity wise, you were one of the closest to it for sure. <laughs> That's, but it, it raises a, an interesting point um, from a, a lot of fans are asking not only about your favorite, the favorite deaths of the show, obviously we can get a little more mor morbid there with uh, Stars Javert's uh, question, um, but even more specifically, and let me see if I can pull them up really quick. Uh, DLove37, um, Miss uh, Mena is wondering as well, were there, uh, uh, Kyle J. Uh, Holiday, a lot of people asking this uh, same question of your character's storyline. Was there, was there a particular moment that stood out to you? Um, or is there something about the end? I mean, I know you were joking, Anton, about Kyvern taking the throne, but was oh, there no. a particular... You're <laughs> 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 joking at all. Yeah, so, so along those same lines, were there, were there things <laughs> about the, the end of your character's storyline that you wish were different or, or changed or you'd like, hope for something uh, differently to happen? Uh, Anton, we got yours already, so it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was very happy. I was very happy with my death. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought it was a good one. I was hoping for a good one, <clears throat> like, you know, something really bad. And, it, and I got only a, a bit of dragon, eaten by a dragon might have been nice. But mm. yeah, I was really happy. And I think it was time for him to go as well. Because, you know, 
he was just such an asshole that like but you know it was like they need to just get rid of him just so they could press on with the story man you know and uh yeah getting eaten alive by his own dogs is a sense of irony there isn't there so it's lovely yeah he deserved it and i think we all would have liked your character to go on forever but um i was just surprised and happy that i didn't die sooner because i expected to die every season <laughs> um, every time I received a script, I, I would like thumb through it looking for my death. Um, cause it just, it felt right that Hodor was going to die in some sort of tragic way. Cause he was kind of yeah. a tragic character in some way. Um, it was definitely just going to tug on the heartstrings in some way. Um, so I'm just happy that I got the season, um, whatever season I died in. What? Oh, six. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, six. Into six, um, yeah. Definitely six. Um, yeah, I was very happy with my death. Um, it, it's just, uh, it was it was very sad for me to watch also. Um, I, it's, I kind of separate myself from the character, and I, I, I just sort of felt sorry for the big guy. Yeah. Six, arguably, uh, I think, the best season of the show. And that's not to knock any of the other seasons, but just so the, to see the culmination of a lot of characters and where they got and where they went and their demises and how they all came together. Uh, such a beautiful season that you all were played a part in, in in different aspects. I know Alice came in a little bit later, Carl Stark. Um, yeah, other other reflections on on character arcs, things that happen with the characters that uh, you were either e equally like happy about or wish was different or anything like that? Um, I was I was quite happy with with my death. I think it was it was right that it had to be it had to be John to come back and do it. Yeah. Um, I, and also, I, I like that I didn't have a single line within season six. I was in three <laughs> episodes and I said no lines, so it made my job very easy. I turned up and just sort of I, I was I was ready for the day. Well, we we filmed. Oh, 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 <laughs> Oh, we filmed uh, uh, Alice's death scene the same night that we filmed Alfie's. So my death scene went first and I'm getting, you know, chased through this wood by so many stuntmen in white walk and makeup and I'm absolutely terrified. I can't see because the fog's like a foot in front of me. And then I go back to the tent, you know, shaking and, and just having been chased by zombies after zombies, go back to the tent and then Alfie's just like... I don't know what I'm going to do. And it's like, do I, okay, do I get scared on set or do I, you know, support my friend who's having to do his death scene in about five seconds. So yeah, it was, it was one of those where it's like, I don't actually remember most of filming that death scene because it was just emotional spectrum through yeah. the roof. Well, and it's a, it's a testament, like you said, um, to the characters that were written that even so many characters, oh my gosh, we have eight of you on screen, but just imagine the cast, you know, and how amazing they all were. And even um, Megan, you coming in and uh, portraying Alice Karstark at late, way late in the season, uh, you know, a few episodes, we were still, you know, taken by her strength and her character and her resolve, you know what I mean? And so even the, the smallest characters had such memorable moments. Uh, and I think that's what was what was a cool yeah, thing. There was so much detail to yeah. everything and everyone that that's kind of the the magic of it. I mean, not just the plot and the characters, but even the costume. Like, I mean, I'm sure this is the same for everyone, but it wasn't just the layer that the camera could see. Every single layer of your costume was so detailed and so authentic that it was like, it felt 100% real, <laughs> whether you were kind of in evening wear or in armor it was just the weight of it and everything felt real so it all felt real not just the set but just the detail to the characters the plot they, they didn't miss anything yeah. George what was it like being so we have a lot of Westerosi uh, if you will here you know what I mean what was it like being part of that kind of other contingent you know the, the other world and um, experiencing how that played out you know, for a while on its own before it all kind of connected over. Were you aware of, I know we talked about not getting scripts and things like that. Were you aware of what was going on overall in the whole world or were you pretty isolated uh, in your storyline? Uh, over there? No, I was pretty isolated, but it was nice because I got to go to all the hot places and, uh, <laughs> and I, I preferred that. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, just be kind of the, the exotic <laughs> which, is, which was fun, um, and also you know I got to I got to act with the dragons, and I think that was um, yes. that was the most fun part of it, really, and the most challenging. And um, I would have loved to have been killed by one, eaten by one, but that didn't happen. <laughs> you survived. Yeah. 
Yeah. Jerome, you, you're uh, arguably out of everyone here. We talked a little about, you know, black and white, good and bad. Like your uh, character, Bron, the most gray, you know what I mean? Uh, constantly looking out for himself, uh, but also deciding where his allegiances are, who his friends are uh, at the time. Any particular, and we, we just went on a roller coaster with him, with him the entire way. And he's almost like, the, an audience member being there, you know, just observing everything and making choices for himself, then ultimately ends up in a pretty good position uh, at the end of the storyline. <laughs> Master of coin, he's got the the high garden. You know, was there anything along the way though that you were particularly like, oh, this is like really cool, or like, oh, I wish this was a little bit different um, in terms of Bronze character? Um, well, most of it was, I do was just it was a, like a dream character for me. Yeah. It was all totally utterly cool. I knew every. Every scene I had, I knew that the boys were going to give me some beautiful comedy there every time, so, which is a beautiful, it's a lovely feeling to have as an, as an actor to know that you've got that quality of, uh, and it was really tapping into a kind of sardonic northern humor that all of my friends that I, that I kind of nav uh, made, navigated my way towards those sort of guys at drama school. It's like I was hungry for that. And so, um, but if I have to say that, uh, I think, you know, I was, I'm, I'm a lot softer than Bron. And so that, that side of my character that was fond of, for instance, Tyrion, um, if, I, if, I'd if I'd been able to write it, I would have, uh, uh, I would have had me turn up um, at the big battle at the end and save his life. And I would have been happy to go down doing that. Just because oh, wow. that's the romantic side of me. Um, and I think, you know, the, the guys were sticking to the more original version of Bron when they had me just chicken out and not turn up. So, th which is fair play. Um, but if anything, but I, yeah, I really wanted to be there. And it was really tough actually knowing that everybody was going off to, to do that. Although they had a very tough time doing it, apparently 50, 50 night shoots in a row, um, which is, which could destroy most people. Um, but a lot of them came out uh, walking very wavy. So, um, but I was, so, I just loved every minute of it. So uh, it was worth it even just for the last scene. I, when I, when I got to uh, be with lots of guys I hadn't been with before. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I have got nothing to complain about. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, and that's a shout out to Julian watching from France. I was curious about the ending of characters as well. Uh, Chivroy, Roman, Jazzy Diva, trying to get to as many as we can and kind of combine them. We appreciate uh, all the fans watching out there. Quick reminder uh, to the fans, you've got about a half an hour left. Uh, if we don't get to one of your more specific questions for one of these amazing actors, uh, definitely take advantage of those one-on-one -on -one video chats, uh, which will happen immediately following. Uh, but we, we keep talking about the characters. I think uh, that is the backbone of the show uh, are the characters and all the nuances they have. Uh, this question comes from a bunch of people, uh, Jolian Vans and at Kelly Cable, uh, a few others. Do you have a favorite character, either from, you know, reading the books or, uh, you know, you know, actors that you got to interact with besides yourself, any other favorite characters uh, from the show um, that, that particularly stick out to you? Bella Ramsey playing Leanna Mormon. I mean, she just yeah. took my breath away from day one and she's now one of my closest friends. So I just think her acting performance was on another level and her death scene was so... Sorry, I lost my speaker for a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Any other uh, fun, fun or favorite characters uh, besides yourself? <laughs> I was like Sam. Sam. Oh, sorry. Sam. Sam was always Sam was always a fun one. It was always good to do scenes with John. Um, he, he was always just a good laugh to be around, and it was just incredible to learn from from all the boys at the, at the Night's Watch, including your good self, Mark. Um, yeah. It was just incredible to, to work with those boys. But Sam always seemed like this beautiful like soul in the middle of all this shit. And it was great. Well, for me, for me, it was Christian, Christian's character. Um, Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
sorry. I think I lost. That's all right. I think yeah. all, yeah, I think we all, and this is part, fun, now. The four, part of the fun creative that's out of all this. Uh, yeah, I think we all lost audio for a second. It seems like maybe we're back. I don't know. Should we do a test Test around the room? Everybody good? Can you yep. hear? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. yeah. We always say this is the like HBO gods that are, or, you know, that are like, we don't want any spoilers or any spinoffs coming up. So we're going to cut their audio in the middle of the middle. <laughs> Any important revelations? This is too much information getting out there, so they're cutting us off. <laughs> um, yeah, any, any other final, uh, again, favorite characters, memorable characters, and then we'll move on to the next fan question. Well, I always enjoy it. People always ask who, who you want to end on the throne, and mine was always Bron. I always thought he was just um, <laughs> the most leveled out of them all. Yeah. And he was the one that I could definitely... But uh, whenever I saw in the script or the schedule that... Varys was going to be involved. Um, I, I just loved him, and knowing that Conleth was going to be in the bar on the night time, uh, doing his silly camp voices and messing around, <laughs> I, I love those. Were, those were my favourite days. I think in Belfast. We talked. We talked a little bit. Yeah. Anyone else? Even you started to say somebody there for a sec. I was just going to mention my horse, uh, Concord. He was great. Aww. Yeah, he was uh, he was he was the best actor on the show for me, um, and uh, no, he was great. He was a lazy, he was a very lazy horse. So he was great to do scenes on because he just didn't move, so he just chill on the horse. And they had to paint his nose black to uh, so that Kit could do uh, his scenes with me in the parley scene with with my horse. And I and I said that was okay, it was fine. That felt awkward. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're doing so well. We're doing so well here. We're doing so well. Let's talk, let's talk about something fun before a while. I can still get a couple of questions in here with our, uh, with our audio. And again, thank you all for doing this. Um, fans are, have, are loving just hearing all your stories and uh, just experiences with the show. Uh, it's super, I, I think it, it's, again, a testament to the show that they brought together such an amazing cast um, that works so well together and just seemed to really be having genuinely fun on set. And that's what brought us into the world with you all. Um, but let's get to a fun, silly question. Uh, people always ask it. I see it on Facebook a couple of times. I also see it uh, here on Twitch, uh, Evil Twin <laughs> would like to know, uh, watching on Twitch, we talked a lot about the beautiful costumes, Megan. Remember we mentioned that, um, the sets and everything like that. And with all these fantasy series, fans just want to know what did you steal? What did you take? What costume pieces? What props? If anything that you feel feel free sharing about uh, any fun things or memories <laughs> that you have. <laughs> I have a funny actually. Oh, um, Christine, go on, man. Um, I got I, I got like a concerned phone call from my manager saying, <laughs> um, "What have you done?" Um, there is the Calgary Herald in um, in in Canada. It must have been a very slow news day. Um, they reported that I had stolen an entire door from <laughs> the entire door, like a, a full size door. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm here to tell you that I did not. I took <laughs> a piece of balsa wood about the size of my palm from the door that came off in my hand. Oh. So I thought, I'll take that and put it in the script and that will remind me of the day I died. So this converted into an entire door. <laughs> <laughs> what if you had actually taken the entire door? That would be, you could just, like, it's your back drop like for all of your meeting like zoom meetings just the actual door that you <laughs> someone might have noticed man i don't know um <laughs> in the uber or whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> you need an uber uber xl for a door yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool other uh fun props or me just mem memories that you that you oh, took I, I, really? I actually i didn't think i did get away with anything i used to say socks was the best i could do but i re i realized <laughs> i managed to retain my practice sword oh cool there we go yeah um, so that's the best thing I've got. You'll often see me out in the garden. Um, but that was it. And then my best memory was, uh, was grabbing Dan Pod's balls when he wasn't, uh, when he didn't know it was coming in the middle of a shot. That was good. <laughs> 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 
and, and, and actually, it's on YouTube. If you go and you see that scene, you can see the look on his face when it happens, and it's just classic. Oh man, awesome! That's up there. We gotta look at that. That's up there with the Starbucks cup. The Starbucks cup, and then uh, Jerome grabbing uh, some balls. <laughs> Oh yeah, who took the Starbucks cup? Where did that? Come from? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Brennick, you started to say something. Where, something yeah, I, it, it's it's not it's not very glamorous, but I took this dirty little neck rag that used to be stitched onto the top of my costume every day, um, oh, I and I, I loved it. It, it, it. it it was it was barely noticeable. Like watching it, I could barely see it, but it took a solid fifteen minutes to stitch it onto my neck every day. So oh, I wanted to remember man. the time I'd wasted just stood there. Well, wonderful Katie in costume, <laughs> stitching around my neck. Oh my it's, god! It's quite nerve-wracking having someone with a needle right next to your neck. Don't know if you've had that done. <laughs> I remember. I remember um, about season. I can't remember which season it was, but when I became the hand of the queen, mm -hmm. I thought, "This is it. I'm going to get a decent costume because." <laughs> <laughs> I basically wore a sack from when I started <laughs> to to the very end, and and I said, "Oh, he's been promoted, so this means a, a really nice costume." And they said, "Oh no, the only thing you will get is a little brass pin, just the hand." Yeah. So that was the only the only thing I coveted about my costume, and I'd like to have stolen, but I just. I'm too good. I cannot steal. So, <laughs> uh, but at the end, I said to Dan and Dave, any chance I could have the pin? And they said, no. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yep. I, I, I accidentally took a ring, because I was wearing lots of rings and necklaces, and um, I accidentally, accidentally. walked in. Back to the <laughs> and um, I had a call going, have you seen the ring, by the way? So I had to give it back. So I didn't, get, I didn't get to take it. It was a nice thing. Didn't steal anything. Yeah, that's a, it has to be a tough one um, on a, a, such a popular series like that, obviously uh, owned by HBO. You know, there's uh, so Jerome, watch out because you show that live on camera. <laughs> that, you're going to want to hide that. <laughs> I asked about this. It's just, it's oh, plastic. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> We've got um, only five minutes left. And again, apologies for the quick uh, technical difficulties there. Uh, it's been such a pleasure just chatting with you all and just hearing, you know, uh, some of your early experiences with the show and some of your favorite things about the show. Um, a quick reminder to fans, again, if you want to purchase those one-on-one -on -one video chats, if you're able, we know these are tough times, um, but if you're able to do so, those will be happening directly after this panel. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. But I'd love to just uh, give everybody one, one more moment. Um, one of the questions uh, that, of course, uh, everyone uh, always wants to ask, uh, Kittensoft39, uh, was who was your choice to see on the Iron Throne? I know we got Anton's answer, um, <laughs> but if, if you want to reflect on that, go ahead. Otherwise, I'd love to just bounce around the room. Uh, again, ton of fans. The show had such an impact on the fantasy genre, on television and cable um, across the world. You know, folks watch this, uh, and they're all watching right now on three different platforms. Uh, so, you know, just a last last shout out from all of you to the fans watching at home. Uh, yeah, whoever wants to kick it off. <laughs> I did have a, I did have a fantasy about. Bron and Daenerys getting together and yeah. Daenerys ending up on the throne with Bron next to her. I do it never happened because I'm sure that it would have she would have gone soft on him and it would have, you know, uh that she, she just needed the love of a good man, basically, um, to to bring her into onto the throne. But it didn't happen. Aside from that, I quite I quite wanted Tyrion to have a go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was a huge fan of Brienne of Tarth. Um, yes. I thought she would have made a great queen. And I always thought that Hodor deserved a bit of love as well. And if, if he had to find like a giant woman, um, like Brienne of Tarth, they could have had like <laughs> Godzilla babies. <laughs> <laughs> ruined him. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said mine earlier. I think I, I wanted Bron to end up on it. I said, you picked right, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I thought I think he uh, he deserved it. He blagged his way through the entire thing. <laughs> so fair play to him. <laughs> I wanted Jon Snow, man. I, I yeah, me Jon too. Snow. I like Jon Snow. He was great. 
he was a nice guy. Yeah, um, it still is, still is beyond the wall. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I wanted him to win. Yeah, so did I, purely selfishly, because that was the thread of the storyline that I was involved in. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to win. It's all a game, isn't it? I think I wanted Khaleesi. Bastard. <laughs> I wanted to see those dragons uh, come back and, you know, throw some more fire around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Megan, start, did you start to say something, Megan? I saw you were just mouthing. I can't hear you. Sorry, Megan, we can't hear you, unfortunately. <laughs> You're muted, Megan. <laughs> Try to do, like, act, can you act out in mime who you'd want to know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, Anton, we know, right? It's uh, you wanted Kyburn, Kyburn the whole way, right? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he, he was the arch survivor until he got. <laughs> You know, too, too, too quick. It was much too quick. I mean, I really needed a big speech at the end. <laughs> we, we all do. It didn't happen. <laughs> it's a rip-off, absolute rip-off. <laughs> and I know at least three people on this planet who wanted Kyburn to, to end <laughs> Let's see what the Maybe. fans are saying. Yes to yes to Brienne. Yes to no. Not not too many for Kyburn yet. There. <laughs> uh, well, again, uh, thank you all. The show. I mean, that just uh, shows how amazing the the story was. And like we all talked about the writing, that there really were so many camps uh, of people that well, there was no right answer, right, for the ending. You know, there really wasn't. It was all about the the, the journey of the characters. And yes, ultimate. And what, what, the best answer was, I think, what happened? The dragon burned the throne, and it really doesn't exist anymore. And that was the whole. You know the metaphor of the whole thing that we, you know, that we don't need that symbol or that person in that chair. You know, it can be anybody. Take control of your lives and things like that. And you all brought such beautiful uh, portrayals to your characters, whether we hated them or loved them or hated and loved them or just loved them. Um, so, I, on behalf of all the fans, thank you for all your work. Again, one of the most awarded and popular and just really beautiful uh, fantasy shows of all time. So, thank you all for being here. Uh, it is so awesome. Wizard World virtual experience fans watching around the world, please give one more big round of applause. Thumbs up emojis, heart emojis, however you want to express uh, your love for this amazing cast. Let's hear it one more time for Jerome Flynn, Anton Lesser, Brennick O'Connor, Christian Nairn, George Giorgio, Ewan Ryan, Mark Stanley, and Megan Parkinson. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.